And for more on artificial intelligence and the controversy that surrounds it, we're joined here in Washington by James Barrett. He's a documentary filmmaker and author of the book, Our Final Invention, Artificial Intelligence and the End of the Human Era. Um, James, should we as humans be concerned that AI is going to take over? In the short term, uh, the question is who controls the AI. In the long term, the question is can AI be controlled? You know, right now AI is is used for very very good things, like we saw, uh, looking at X-rays, finding diseases. Um, but people are also using AI to to create battlefield robots that act autonomously, that that kill people without a human in the loop. They're using it for to develop drones. Um, they're using it for data mining software that that that. Uh, exploits our our privacy. So in the, in the short term, it's who controls the AI. In the long term, we do need to worry about can we control the AI when it, when it reaches human level intelligence and beyond. And so and that may that may not be so far away. Do you think there will be in controls in place being aware of mm -hmm. that issue? Um, what's being done to ensure that that doesn't happen? Really nothing. Um, Right now, all these companies and all this money is being poured into rapid product development. Very few people are really thinking about the ethics behind creating some of these devices and the long-term impact. Right now, we face, in the next 20 or 30 years, 50 percent uh, unemployment because of automation and, and artificial intelligence. You know, AI is getting to be extremely good at, at many of the things we do, um, and it's taking, taking a lot of jobs. It, at some point, when it, when it eclipses our own intelligence, we're, we're going to have a hard time controlling it. We don't have any experience dealing with something more intelligent than we are. We, we run the planet. We humans run the planet not because we're the strongest or the fastest creature, but because we're the most intelligent. And when we share the planet with something more intelligent than we are, then we really need to, to watch out. Well, you do mention all the money and the investment, uh, and it's only continuing to grow. Oh, yeah. There are conferences uh, about this very thing, all these companies. Um, talk more about the argument, because there are some people who think it's beneficial, that it can save lives, particularly sure. when it comes to the medical field, yeah. maybe perhaps in agriculture, as, as we saw in our story. Oh, AI is a fascinating and, and, and potentially very beneficial technology. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the most inward-looking technologies uh, for humans. It asks us, really, what are we? It, there's psychology, there's neuroscience involved. The benefits are just simply amazing. But what we don't know is how AI will behave when it's, uh, when it's as intelligent as we are and beyond. In, in my book, Our Final Invention, I interviewed a scientist named Steve Amahundro, who, who makes AI. And he said uh, AI will develop basic drives much like our own, like self-protection, like resource acquisition, that will invariably lead to competition for resources between us and, and machines that are thousands or millions of times more intelligent than we are. Nobody's planning for that right now. Recently, 70 scientists got together and signed a, signed a letter that said, in the development of advanced AI, we need to solve the control problem, exactly what you said. How do we control intelligence that's vastly greater than our own? You know, it keeps going around in circles because as I'm listening to you explain this, you know, it sounds like uh, these machines will be more intelligent, mm -hmm. will be smarter than humans, but it'll still take humans to initiate the machines, right? Yes, I mean, sure, sure. But we know from the history of technology, you know, AI is a dual use technology capable of great good and great harm. It's a lot like nuclear fission. When nuclear fission was developed, nuclear fission powers power plants and, and bombs. When it was being developed in the 20s and 30s, it was thought of a, as a way to split the atom and get free energy and then utopia results. Uh, then what happened is we were introduced to nuclear fission at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was quickly weaponized. AI is following a similar track. Right now, it's, it's, it's got a, a huge amount of potential to, to solve a lot of mankind's problems. But at the same time, it's already being weaponized. It's already being used to, to invade our privacy. It's, uh, so we've, we've got to watch out that it doesn't follow the same track as nuclear fission. Um, and, and just because we created it doesn't mean we can always control it. We, a lot of our innovation in, in technology runs ahead of our stewardship of our ability to control and to create things in a positive way. So we need to really watch it with AI. Something to look forward, fascinating discussion. James Barrett, thank you so much for your insight. We truly appreciate it. Thank you.